Hey guys, back again for another one. Um, we finally got through Christmas. And by the way, Merry Christmas to all. Um, we've got past that, now I can get back to concentrating and making videos. And hopefully with this new year coming up, I can actually do a few more trips, which would be nice. And get out and use some of these tips and tricks I've been showing you. But this, is, this video here, this is another requested one. It's summertime here, obviously. And the bull sharks are around in the canals and the broad water. And a lot of people ask me how to catch them. I mean, honestly, I don't understand it. Um, I'm not a shark fish. Oh, I used to be a shark fisherman, but I'm sort of over it nowadays. But what I'm going to do here, guys, is just give you a basic rundown on how to catch a few small bull sharks in the canals and the broad water, and even up to like um, broad water. Uh, some good ones, like eight, maybe 10 footers we have come across over the years. I'll show you where, and I'll tell you how. It's not hard, I've got my trusty old whiteboard there with um, three different spots I've marked out. For you guys to go have a bit of a try and see if you can get yourself a bull shark. But before we get to that, everyone thinks too much about the wire traces and stuff. Like these, you're chasing sharks. They're not the brightest things in the world. Um, they're garbage cuts basically. If you put something down there, they're gonna eat it. Even if they're full, they'll regurgitate and they'll eat. Um, so don't be too fussed on the rigs. Just, you need wire, that's it. So we'll start off with a couple of basic rigs. So if, I'm, if I wanted to get the canals chasing like little two footers, three footers, four footers, which a lot of you guys do for a bit of fun on like gear, which is all great. You don't need the big heavy duty traces, the big plastic coated 10, 15 foot traces. Okay guys, all you're gonna need is a decent multi-strand wire. So I've got a nice soft multi-strand wire. I like, some guys use piano, piano wire or single strand wire. I prefer to use multi-strand because I don't trust the other stuff if it gets kinked. So I use just this multi-strand wire. And I'm not gonna make a long one here, but generally, because a lot of guys are fishing from the shore, so they wanna cast it. So what we do is make a short trace, like a couple of foot long, two, three foot long, not even three foot, you won't be able to cast it. Say two foot, that's about two foot. Uh, it's a bit over, but anyway. Okay. To, it's going to be for casting. So a short trace. Um, use a circle hook if you're going to release the sharks. Like a lot, of, I know a lot of you guys will want to release them, which is good. So release the sharks. Um, just use a circle hook because this will get caught in the corner of the mouth, and you can either cut it off. And these hooks are only a cheap hook, so they'll rust away after a few days. Or you got a de hooker. You can get the hook out yourself if you can. Just be careful of that. <laughs> Some of those teeth are rather sharp. Okay, so this is like, that's about an 8 circle. On a short tray aside, if I was going to cast them for sure, I'd probably chop that down to about yay. And I'd use this just for the bite trace. Okay. As I said, these are only for small sharks up the canals. And the bait I'd use on this, like you can, sharks will eat a variety of things, they're sharks. But bull sharks really respond well to, one of my favourite baits is trevally. If I know all you guys know know where and how to catch trevally, live trevally is best, but dead ones are okay, but make sure they're fresh. Don't throw them in a freezer for six months. Make sure they're fresh, and if you're going to use um, dead ones, put a slit on, just down to the tail or something, let the oil go. Something about the oil and um, trevally, the sharks love. Okay? And even if you're going to use a live trevally, what we do is we get the scissors and their tail fins. You cut, them, cut those tails about halfway. Don't cut them off fully because you're going to kill the things, but shorten them down about half, okay? And when you put them in the water, they try to kick like mad. They can't really go anywhere. They just they don't swim around all the ocean or the rivers. Um, and they put out some good vibrations, okay? That will attract bullies from miles away. And a trevally that's stre yeah, stressed and trying to get away. So live trevally, dead trevally, very good on a rig like this. Um... Saying that too, casting a live trevally from the shore, or a dead trevally from the shores, can be a bit tricky. But also saying that, you don't need to cast distance because most of the sharks are going to be along the edges, along, cruising along the edge of the sandbanks, looking for stingrays and things like that for a feed. Um, they'll be in rather close, cruising along the edge of the rocks, just looking for fish for a feed. They're not going to be out in the middle of the channel. Like when I show you over here on the board, some of the shark fishing spots we have, we're not fishing in the middle of the channels. Okay. So short trace, 8 a hook, and hopefully a trevally. If not a trevally, freshwater eel. Just get a chunk of freshwater eel and hook it on with this. 
If you don't know how to hook it on, get a couple of small zip ties and just zip tie the hook and a bit of a leader to around, around a you know, shank of a hill. Just a couple of zip ties, just to hold it on. Okay, and the other bait to use too, um, well, this is more for bigger sharks, but little ones will eat it. It's just a small stingray or a flap of a stingray. All good baits. And that way, those sort of baits won't get picked away from the bremen or the other peckers. Like if you put a piece of mullet out or something like that, um, bremen and all sorts of other critters are just going to pick away and your shark baits can be gone in minutes. But sharks will eat the mullet too. you just got to keep an eye on it, keep checking it, make sure it's still there and not picked away. Okay, so a small trap like that. I've got like a size 6 ball sinker. That's all you're going to need to put it on the bottom. So you get fish on the bottom for these sharks. Okay, for the bull sharks up the canals. So about a size 6 will hold the hold a, a bait there. Even at a valley with his fins cut off, he's not going to swim everywhere. That will hold them on the bottom. And you just got to lob them out so they're a few feet past the, past the banks. Because the sharks are cruising in close, they're not out wide. And if I'm fishing like that along the banks... I'll be using like an outfit like this. This has got 15 kilo on it, but it's just a sustained 10,000. It's just a spin reel. Okay, and a, that's a nice seven foot casting rod. This is not my shark fishing rod, but I'd use something like this if I was chasing small sharks just from, from the land to cast. Okay. And with a small trace too, short trace, because shark skins are rather raspy and if your mono trace rubs against them for too long, they will break off. So when you're running a short trace like this, make sure you've got a heavier mono trace, like you've got a 100 pound or something mono trace. And, you know, a couple of feet of that or, you know, four foot, five foot of that heavier trace. That's just for the body, for the rubbing. So it won't take that long to land a small shark. It'd be fun, but it just saves, saves break-offs. Okay? Um, yeah, that's just basically it. Um, all these canals on the Gold Coast hold sharks. There's bull sharks and all these canals over summer. There really is. Mostly small ones up the canals, like I said, two to four footers, but fun on like gear. Uh, the Coomba River and the Rang River are the two main ones to go try. Um, you can always find places on the banks. It's a lot of bait out. Try at night time, less boat traffic, less people. The sharks will be around at night time. Okay, and what we're going to do now... And I said, this is just a very basic one to get you guys out to catch a shark to have some fun with the kids or whatever. Now I'm going to turn you around and show you the, bo the board. And the board is a little bit more serious. It's more in a broad water and mainly for boats. Okay, this is going to be boats, but this is also going to be chasing bigger sharks in these spots. I've got one picture down there of the, of the um, Narang River where we used to fish with the boats. And you used to catch some rather decent bullies like our four to eight footers. So eight footers are good fun up this spot in the rain and the other couple are around the seaway and up around Kuma River just near Kuma River and their boats and this is where you're going to catch chase say six to ten footers okay and when I'm talking six to ten footers you're not using a spin rod you're going to be using basically you're going to be using game gear okay this is a 15 kilo TLD 30 I know a lot of you guys say you're not going to catch a 10 footer on this I'm going to say BS to that okay learn how to fish you will get eight and ten footers on this. They'll take an hour, but you will get them. All I do is just knuckle down and go hard and don't give them any. You will tire them out, especially bull sharks. They are, they are fat and lazy, especially that size. They get rather lazy. And they just use their weight against you. So 15 kilo, or even 24 on a TLD 30, TLD 50 or some sort of a game reel. I use 15, but some guys will probably run, you know, 24. Same again with the rigs, multi-strand wire, but I'm going to upgrade the hooks, obviously, so they're going to go up to like a 12-0 or something, heavier gauge, even a 15-0. And multi-strand wire, same again, but this is only 100 pound. I won't be using 100 pound for the bigger sharks. Okay, go look for about three or 400 pound. Well, 250, 300 should be enough for these sharks. You're not chasing absolute monsters. 250, 300, multi-strand. Look for about a 12-0 hook. Or even some guys, myself included, if I'm going to use a big bait for these things, you're going to have two hooks, double hook rig. Okay. And I'm not going to be using sinkers in these spots. These spots we fish unweighted. Just let the baits go with the current. Okay. So now that's out of the way. Oh, and one other thing, when you chase, want to go chase some big ones, you don't run a short trace. The traces you're going to make are going to be the length of the shark plus some. So you're looking, you want to go chase 10 footers, Make yourself a 12 foot trace, okay? 
if you want to go chase six footers, but you might catch a 10 footer, still make a 12 foot trace. That way you've got to buy a trace, the body, the tail is not going to hit your line because you're going to be into a long fight with these, with the bigger ones, they will take a while to land. So make yourself a long trace and take a pair of gloves because when you get up to the end of the trace, obviously somebody's going to have to trace it and to pull it in. So you're going to need a good pair of tracing gloves too. And hopefully when you do this, what I'm about to show you, you're going to go with somebody else because by yourself with a long trace and a decent shark can be a bit tricky. So take somebody else just for a bit of safety, okay? And they can film and get some good footage for you. <laughs> Okay, so basically game gear, you got a longer trace. Now we're going to go to the board. I'm going to show you some spots around the broadwater. We can go out in a tinny, a small boat or medium sized boat, anchor at night time, and hopefully chase a, say, six to 10 footer, okay? Here we go, guys. Right, turn you around. Hopefully you can see me map there. Hang on, trust the old light. Uh, that's sort of in. Shiny, isn't it? Okay. Uh, got the... All right, guys. Hopefully you can see well enough there. So what we got got here on the board? What we start off with? When I was talking before for up the Narang River, you got the Narang River here. That's Isle of Capri Bridge there. You can see Isle of Capri. Okay. And if you go around the corner and down, this is what or well, the Bundle Bridge basically. That's Bundle Road, and it's Bundle just here. So you got the Bundle Bridge, Isle of Capri Bridge. Both these spots are awesome shark fishing, shark fishing spots at night time. And years ago, we used to catch a lot of bullies there, ranging from like four to, basically four to eight feet. Okay, and the best part about these, these bridges are rolled it up, so at night time, especially over high tide, you can actually catch trevally on poppers and stick baits, so you can have fun catching trevally over night time, then you can put them on the shark rods and put them out for shark baits, which is great. So how does this work? So obviously broad water's up here, the, so the raw, when the water's coming in, it's running down, okay? It's going this way, running in. So when you got a run-in tide, I fish Isle of Capri Bridge on this side, okay? I know there's a, there's a sandbar here, there's a deep channel over this side. Just anchor on the edge of the sandbar, float your baits back or unweighted, okay? Just here, on a run-in tide, we'll say live to valley, hopefully, it's the best bait there. But eels, if you haven't got trevally, you use eels or stingrays or anything like that because you're going to be chasing some decent sized sharks. And just let your base go back unweighted over summer on a run in tide at the Isle of Capri Bridge. Good spot to get some good sharks. Okay, at night time. Not daytime, but night time. And usually later in the night, the better this works. Less boat traffic, less people. If the tide's running out, you've got a nice, nice, nice bummy nights, hot night, you want to go for a shark fish and you're, you're bored. And the tide's running out, don't stress. Come down here to Bundle Bridge, okay? And when the tide's running out, it's going that way, right? You wanna fish this side of the bridge, okay? And you wanna be on the right-hand side. So if you're heading back towards the broad water, you wanna be on the right-hand side here. Just, just there's a, a concrete uh, wall along here and it drops off, it comes out a couple of feet, then drops off. You just wanna be off that drop off. With, once again, live trevally, dead trevally, stingrays, um, eels, just that sort of bait, and un have your bait unweighted, big bait unweighted, and let it go, drift back, okay, unweighted here, and fish a run out tide. So basically, Isle of Capri Bridge, run in tide, Bundle Bridge here, run out tide. This stretch, for some reason, this stretch here of water holds some good sharks, so we've hooked some good ones. We have got them up to about 10 feet of here over the years. But most of the sharks you catch here, most of them, 90% of them, are going to be around the six foot mark. Okay, which is a good size shark for a bit of fun. Okay, the next one most people know, but also you got the seaway here. On a running tide and high tide, what people don't know, you got a red marker here. Okay, and just inside that marker there, there's you got like the north wall here, see what um rock wall. Just inside our run-in tide and over high tide, drop some baits here. Was as the tide started to slacken, slacken off, last and run in over high tide, drop some big baits here, some stingrays, like I said once again, trevally, um, eels, whatever. And for some reason, sharks con con I can't even say it, conjugate on this corner. And we've got um, small tigers there, lots of bull sharks, other kinds of whalers, and hammerheads here at night time. For some reason, they sit on this corner. Okay. 
especially over a tide change at high tide. So it's a good spot to fish. Another one is too, um, North Wall Seaway, as long as it's really calm, really calm, you've got calm offshore, there's no swell, and a run out tide. So the tide comes out here and a big eddy forms here, there's no current off to the North Wall. If you drop anchor just off the North Wall on that eddy and float out those baits, the man of bull, big bull sharks are caught there, and hammerheads, especially big hammerheads at night time. Sitting there, we've got some monster sharks here, just sitting off the end of the North Wall. I know there's a lot of divers, and they say they see a lot of bull sharks and small, but small ones at daytime. But at night time, you fish there with some big baits, you hook some big critters. And I've, we've hooked sharks there, we can't stop. There's just been some big ones. And they just go out the current, they go out to sea, so. Uh, we've got some crackers there, and especially hammerheads. I've caught some monster hammerheads there. Okay. And next one we'll get to. This is uh, another one that a lot of people don't know, but it's really good shark fishing, for, especially for big bull sharks. Okay, so what we've got here, you can see this is Coomba River here. Uh, if you go to the south there, turn to the right, that's heading south, that's heading towards Broadwater. And if you go to the left and head to the north there, that's what we call the auto shots, okay? So Coomba River, as you come out of Coomba River, you've got this big sandbar here. You've got a few markers along here. Just off that sandbar, late at night, high tide running out. High tide running out, sit here just off that bar, drop an anchor, and float out some big baits. Once again, stingrays, trevally, eels, whatever. I'm well, not float out, just unweighted. Let a couple of big baits go here. And the sharks, the bar must be just a big bully, so they come out to, you know, crews going out with the tide. And for some reason, they congregate here too. And we get some good eight footers here, a lot of eight footers. So it's a good spot for sharks, and not many people know this, not many people fish here, but it's a really good spot for bull sharks. Okay, and the last one is the older sharks. Most people know the main channel coming along here, and there is an old sunken houseboat just up here. Okay, He's, you have to find it on your GPS, but you don't have to be on the houseboat itself. Okay, that's a good spot for jewies and flathead and everything else, but you don't have to be on it, you just gotta be in that general area, like that deep channel, hard up against the bank where it drops off, or if you log through here, most of you guys know, chasing flathead, that drops off really deep. So drop your anchor just up here near that houseboat. Once again, big boat, big baits, unweighted, just let them go with the current. Uh, big lots of valley, live, dead, stingrays, eels, and just let your baits go. And basically, I like fishing this on a running tide. So I sit here at a low tide running in, okay, roughly around here, running tide, middle of the night when it's dead quiet, there's no boats around, you don't want any traffic for this. Because some of these sharks are pretty big and take a bit of time to land. And you don't want traffic, so you only get cut off because I'll run across the channel and all of that. So mid middle of the night, usually when it's a bit windy and you know, shitty, there's no one around. So you drop your was well, not good. <laughs> anyway, you drop your ankle, the order shots there, unweighted, and <laughs> and let it go. Uh, anyway, we pretty much got through what I wanted to get through anyway. That was it. That was a heap of spots for you guys to go try, chase a few sharks. So don't forget, smaller, like light spin rods, see smaller traces and stuff, smaller baits from the land. Especially at the Isla Capri Bridge and Bundle Bridge, you can fish from the land there. Flick some baits out, you're going to catch some small bull sharks, have a bit of fun. you got the heavier gear, 10 foot traces, you're going to let like just off the back of the boat and let the current take them. Nice big heavy baits, or live, live trevally or tail, um, not tailor, um, live trevally, stingrays, you know, that sort of stuff, stingray flaps, eels, just let it go, wave around the current in those other spots on broadwater. And if you do that at night time over summer, guys, you'll hook some big sharks. There's some big sharks in these broadwater. A lot of people have got their heads stuck in the sand and there's no big sharks or small ones, but they are there. You go looking for them, guys, in those spots, you will find them. Anyway, enough yapping on about sharks. Um, hope you enjoyed that video. Hope it helps. If you do catch any decent sized sharks, let me know. So send, me a, send me a comment and let me know how you went. Um, yeah, that's it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to say we'll see you next week. Um, hopefully we can start doing a few trips soon. Hopefully this weather clears up because this weather's horrible for offshore. But once again, if you want to go shark fishing, great for shark fishing. Because Broadwater's going to be nice and quiet at night time. It's blowing its ass off. But 
right around the sharks. Anyway, enough of that. I'll see you next week. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and we'll see what, I'm not sure what next week is, but we'll, we'll see. We'll both be surprised when we get there. See you guys. Bye.